Hey y'all, Kentucky Farmer here, and welcome back to Pleasant Valley 17 version 2. Uh, I'm gonna start a small series of tutorial videos to help people with this map. There's a lot going on with this map, and the documentation um, just really hasn't been made for it yet. So I, there's a lot of questions, and so I wanted to do a series of quick videos to help people get the hang of all the stuff that's going on on this map. So in this video we're going to talk about the menu system. So everyone's familiar with the normal escape menu in the game. And if we come over to our prices tab, you'll notice that it's actually pretty limited. There's not much over here. In fact, there's nowhere over here that buys grain, right? So, you know, if you have grain, where would you sell it? Because no one's buying it. This is just your farm BGAs and your farm barns, and then the spinneries. And looks like we got a sawmill in here. So, as you can tell, there's quite a few things that are missing from this list as far as places that'll purchase. And that's because this map has a new menu system. To open this menu on a US keyboard, it's the slash key with the question mark. And what's on the key isn't as important as the location of the key. So if you're not using a US English layout keyboard, it's the key that's next to the right shift key. Uh, it's the one that's to the left of the right shift key on a keyboard. You just press that key and it opens this menu up. Now you can move this menu around by grabbing this corner over here. So I'll move it down here. And then, so I still have my cursor. And if you notice, I can't look around while my cursor's up. If you press the key again, the menu will stay up and you can look around. So now I can come down here, press the key again to get my cursor can drag this up here that way we've got more room to see it and uh, we can even come over here to our settings area and for this video I'm gonna dial this up so that the text is a little bit bigger so that hopefully you guys can see it so you see we have shops randomly change the volume of reserves is set to on and what that means is uh, the the shops in the game have a certain amount of goods on hand and a certain amount of demand and whatever the difference is that's the limit to how much they're willing to buy from you once they've got all the inventory that they're willing to accept you can't sell at them anymore no matter what the price is so that's a little different than the standard uh, game settings uh, quick delivery of cargo these are um, delivery missions where uh, like a periodically something will pop up and say you know so and so wants X number of liters of wheat within eight minutes if you can deliver it you get this much money uh, the contracts are uh, similar to that it's just a, a type of mission in the game uh, you typically have longer though like there'll be a contract to deliver X number of goods to this location in the next 24 hours or something like that uh, I'm still not sure what dirt control on gates is I haven't quite figured that one out uh, show promptings uh, that'll be uh, various messages that pop up and big fill type overlays with names. You'll notice those on the bottom right hand side of the screen as you're playing. If you fill up your seeder, the type of seed and the fertilizer will show up with big names and stuff over there. Uh, let's see, and then we've got wheels damage crop. That's pretty self explanatory. Show pallet info. When you walk up to a pallet of something, there'll be a little bit of text on the screen that tells you what the type is and it will tell you what the volume contained within it is and then it also gives you the option to remove it. Uh, gold coin search so there's gold coins in the game uh, it's different than the gold nugget search in single player gold coin search does work in multiplayer and from what I can tell uh, 
the gold coins are then used later on when trying to acquire businesses. I believe they can be used to bribe the real estate agent. Remove the target from the center screen. That's the little circle. There, it just showed up right there. Let me move this. So that's the target, right? Automatic egg picking up. Um, this, I believe, automatically picks up the eggs from the chickens. Uh, you can't turn this on in multiplayer, I've noticed. And then field job rewards depends on the rating. So I believe that's the... Um, if you do a field mission for a farmer, the outcome of it, it differs now depending on what your rating for the farmer is. So those are your settings. Now from the, the main part of the screen here, you'll start off with NA-R black cap bird seed. So one of the questions a lot of people have is what is this NA-R? So I'm actually going to close this, and we're going to open up our normal map over here. And if you look, you can see on some of these names. Let me hide those. Okay. So let's zoom in here. So we've got T1-T Central Transport, NA-R Grain Elevator, T1-B Crystal Steel. So. The first part of this, T1, means it's connected to the rail line, the first, the number one train line. So this over here is the number one train line, down here is the number three train line, and over here is the number two train line. So that's what the T1, T2, T3 stands for. NA would be for anything that doesn't have train access. And that kind of also rolls into what the second letter is. If you notice, this is T1-T, Central Transport, which means it's only connected to the train line. There's no way to go there by road. NA-R, R means road, so you can only get to this by road. You cannot get to it by train. T1-B, B is for both, so you can get to it by rail or road. That's what those codes mean in front of all of the locations. So coming back into our menu here, you'll see we have the NA-R Black Cat Bird Seed. If you notice when I mouse over the name, uh, the bottom part changes there, and you can see the productivity in liters per hour, the regular maintenance per day, day cost per hour, night cost per hour, the working hours, and the state. And then if I am not moused over it, you can see that it is currently buying millet, sunflower, corn, and coal. And these are the prices that it's paying for it. And the column on the right is its maximum inventory. And the column on the left is how much it currently has. So you can click this to switch it to a percentage. And you can see it's lowest on sunflower. And so, you know, you could take some sunflower and sell. Once this gets to 100% though, it's not going to buy any more. And of course this is the price per thousand liters that it's paying for each one of these things. And you can also go to here and you can buy birdseed. If you need birdseed for a different factory or something, you can buy pallets of birdseed from this facility for 2400 and uh, it currently has 97,500 liters of birdseed, so that would be the maximum that you could buy from it. And uh, yeah, so that's how that is set up. Now this is for a factory that we don't currently own. It's a little bit different for facilities that you do own. And so let's scroll over to one that we do own here. So when you start the game, you own Cogent Force Products and you own the stone processing facility. If you notice, these have these bars here for start produce. And let's go back to Cogent. Okay, Cogent for pro Force Products. So if you notice, this wants wood chips and coal, but there's no price anymore, right? So because you own this facility, it's not going to pay you to drop off 
uh, resources into it. And it's not going to charge you to pick up resources from it, right? So it, once you fill it up with wood chips and coal, and the other thing that's a little interesting about this one, because it has multiple lines, uh, the 1 million liters of wood chips and the 20,000 liters of coal is for the entire facility. So each line will consume that amount from the overall facility's inventory, and then it's going to produce paper, resin, and boards. Say you just want resin, you can just start production on this one once you fill up the wood chips and coal and leave the other two lines off. Once you generate um, you know, paper, resin, and boards, then you can take that and sell it somewhere else to make money. So that's the factory menu. The next menu over here is the shops. And you'll see here that again, we've got the name and the codes, NA-R, Town Bakery. So this is no rail access, road only. Town Bakery is the name. Uh, if I mouse over it, Working hours are day long. State is working, so it's open and we can sell there. And it's currently buying coffee, cranberry, rice, oats, canola, sugar, wheat flour, oat flour, rye flour, wheat bread, oat bread, rye bread, cheese, sour cream, apple, cherry, orange, raspberry, and strawberry. Uh, this is the price per liter that it's going to pay you for. This is how much it currently has in stock. And this is the maximum capacity. So again, we can switch to the percentages and see, oh, look, it's really low on rice, and it's really low on strawberry. If we had a lot to sell, we could take them here and sell them. You can scroll through the list, just like the factories, and you know, kind of compare the buying prices and see if there's perhaps a price somewhere that looks good. Uh, the next tab over here is the warehouses. Let's switch this back. All right, so we start off here with NA-R Wright Farm. That's our farm. That's where we are right now. This is the inventory levels of our storage facility here at this farm. So we start off with some wheat, barley, canola, sunflower, soybean, corn, potatoes, sugar beets. You know, we've got all this stuff. Our maximum capacity currently at our storage facility is 1 million liters per type. We can scroll through here and you see we've got Cook Farms, Evan Farms, Johnson Farm, Roberts Farm, Allen Farm. Those are all the main farms. And then we've got these transfer points. So this is the T2, T3B South Station goods. So this is the transfer station between the T2, T3 rail lines and it has a, a road transfer point so you could bring semis there as well. If you notice the transfer stations also have goods in them and this has 10 million liters of storage. So uh, the other nice thing about this game is you do not get charged to store stuff in these transfer station facilities unlike the stock game. So here's uh, Southern Station or South Station Goods, South Station Foods, North Station Grains, North Station Goods, North Station Foods, East Station Grains, East Station Goods, East Station Foods, Central Station Grains, Goldcrest Pacific Grain, Maplefield Pool, uh, and now here we've got the pig farm silo. So at the pig farm we've got that two bin silo that holds straw and pig food. Here's where you can see how much you have on stock and how much capacity you have. Here's the sheep farm silo for hay and grass. The cow farm silo for TMR, straw, silage, grass, chaff, and hay. And it holds five million liters of each type. Here's the stone processing silo. So there's a silo over at the stone processing facility that you can use for interim storage. Uh, and if you notice, it's T1B, which means you can use it to load onto semis or onto the train, on the T1 train. We've got square bale storage, which we'll cover this in a later video, and round bale storage. And then we're back here to the right farm. Then finally, the last tab here is the animals tab. So this is our cows. So we don't own any, there's no productivity, no reproduction rate, no animals, you know. Here's our slurry, manure, milk, water, straw, grass, hay, power food numbers. And that goes for sheep and chickens and pigs. So that is how you use 
that menu system. Now, there's two other menus in this game that I want to show you. One is the uh, real estate menu, which to do that, we're going to hold down the right shift key, and then I'm going to press the same button that I used to open that menu, which for me is the slash with the question mark next to it. If you notice, it brings up this window here. Uh, down here is the rating. So this is how you get the ability to um, buy facilities. So if we notice, Black Cat Birdseed has a normal value of $260,000, and you need a rating of 10 to buy it. I don't have a rating of 10 yet. I only have a rating of 8, uh, and that's because of owned objects. So in order to increase your rating, you either need to do missions, do contracts, purchase licenses like a logging license, own cows, own pigs, own sheep, threshed area, so actually do farming, right? Uh, and Or the amount of hours you've played, and then uh, coin deals can impact it. So if you do a coin deal with a real estate agent, it will negatively impact your rating. Illegally felled trees, so if I go cut down a tree without actually taking out a license to log, uh, that will negatively impact my rating. Uh, pretty significantly, and it charges you a penalty. Uh, there's railroad penalties in here. I have not actually seen this ever take effect. Um, I believe there's... Uh, <laughs> that I, I tried to look in the script to figure out how that works, and I kind of think there's like um, speed limits or something in the rail lines. I don't quite know exactly. <laughs> what that does but um, you know maybe that's something that's still be uh, yet to be updated in this map uh, I think <laughs> I'm having some text overlap issues here and it's probably because I turned up my uh, text size a little bit too much let me dial this back down and see if that actually looks better okay yeah so that's better um, so then you know these are all of the different factories, right? Black Cat Birdseed, the Grain Mill, Sugar Refinery, Borden Dairy, P. Jeff's Concrete, User Glue, uh, Del Monte, Hops and Props, Popcorn Suttons, FM Textile, National Gypsum, Soy Silk, Soy Milk, Heartland Bread, Kellogg's, Frito-Lay, Sam Adams, Furniture Factory, Pepsi, Smirnoff, Crystal Steel, and Shell Fuel. So Shell Fuel being the kind of the last one on the list, takes $650,000 and you need a rating of 125 before you can buy it. Uh, the these are a little bit different. Uh, these are extra garage bays, and so there's uh, garage bays that look kind of like these, right, all over the map. And so if you notice on these, O will open the gate, right, which means it's activated and I can use it. You'll find some in the map that are not activated, and in order to be able to use them you have to come in here and buy them. So you'll need a rating and $60,000 to purchase that. Uh, I'm gonna hop up to the top part of the map and we're gonna look at one more menu here. Okay, so here I am at the north part of the town and we've got two businesses here. We've got the Remax Home and Land Real Estate Office and the Big Sky Remodel and Construction Office. If I come over here and if you notice it's uh, 3.30 in the afternoon, this will open up the screen again, and you'll have, you know, this menu. So this is, if you want to go in and place an offer to buy one of those locations, this is where you'd go to do that. And it has um, operating hours. I think it's um, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., uh, you know, in that range somewhere. <laughs> like normal business hours basically. And then the construction office has a similar menu. And over here, if you notice, uh, this is upgrades that you can purchase. So uh, for example, because we own cogent and stone processing off the bat, uh, what you can then do is pay to upgrade the productivity of those facilities. And so we can upgrade cogent to the next productivity level 
and it will produce then 6,480 liters per hour and it's going to cost us $800,000 to do that upgrade and it's going to increase the regular maintenance per day up to 3,000. And again, if we wanted to see, so that's 6,480 and 3,000. Let's leave this menu, open this menu, come over here to factories, mouse over this. So our current productivity is 4,680 and our current maintenance is 2,500. So buying that would increase our maintenance by 500 and it would increase our productivity by, was that about 2,000? Uh, yeah, about 2,000. So, you know, those are upgrades you can do as you buy more factories. The upgrades for those factories will show up here. And then we've got upgrades that we can do at the farm. So this will update the storage capacity from 1 million liters to 3 million liters. And it's going to cost us a million dollars to do it and our regular maintenance will then be $200 per day for that storage. Uh, one of the things, <laughs> not only do you have to have the money to do the upgrade, but from what I've been told, the storage facility also needs to be empty before you can upgrade it. So uh, keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, and then down here we've got South Station Grains, South Station Goods, South Station Foods, which can also be upgraded to 30 million liters. I believe it's a 10 million right now. And it'll cost uh, $3 million to do that upgrade. All right, so that is the menu functions within Pleasant Valley 17 V2. Uh, be sure to <laughs> check back for more videos. I'm gonna cover all the different facilities and production stuff and you know, I'll do one per video and you know, if you have any questions about the map, I'll be happy to try and answer them in a video. Just leave them in the comments down below. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, would you please give it a thumbs up? That helps a lot. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more Farming Simulator videos. I'm Kentucky Farmer. Thanks for watching.